Hello, friends. My name is Rex and my co-host. Hi, I'm Kent. And friends, today we have a very special guest. Um, our guest was the singer for the band Head East in the 70s, and then he joined Petra in 1986, where they released several seminal records. John has also released six solo albums, and his latest project is called History, which is a three CD limited edition box set. Please welcome with me, John Schlitt. Hey, John, it's an honor, sir. Oh, guys, no, it's an honor for me. Thank you for your interest in uh, in what we're doing. I, I appreciate it and being able to talk with you all and, and letting folks know what's going on. Okay. Well, why don't we just go there, John? Um, your latest project is called History. Mm -hmm. It's a three CD uh, set. Um, how did you come up with that name for, for the uh, box set? Well, Greg, Greg, uh, of Girder Music, he's a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he just recently he's become a very good friend. Him working with the the Petra fiftieth uh, anniversary, uh, he's been a very faithful. I, I won't say, yeah, I guess I could say fan of Petra and what we've done. Really believed in our ministry, uh, believed in in classic Christian rock, and and put his his uh, record company to our service. And uh, so he called me up and said, John, uh, we want to do a, a special anniversary uh, compilation of your solo stuff. I said, really? I said, aren't you busy with the with the Petra 50th? And he says, yes. But he says, uh, our staff here really wants to, they love your stuff, really feel that it, it's time to put together a package and we've, we've designed it. Yes, I, I love that. I love that package. Uh, and it's just... Uh, I said, well, thank you, you know, because I was busy with Petra, hadn't even thought of my my <laughs> my solo stuff. Man, you're a good advertiser. I like that. <laughs> anyway, uh, I just I just said, yeah, let's do it. And he says, okay, what are we going to call it? And I'll tell you, I thought about it, and and as he was describing, I said, man, that's my history. He goes, yes. That's what we wanted, and I said, "Let's let's just call it history." You know, the the my my solo uh, history, and uh, uh, not that it's over, but up to this time, this is the history of of my opportunity to do stuff outside of Petra Camp, and uh, so it came together. And then they designed this beautiful cover that you've just seen, and uh, not to mention the the uh, fourteen page uh, biography in it, uh, the the song selection they. They gave me a song selection that they liked, and I only changed like three different songs, uh, which because I, I totally agreed with everything, except there was a couple special songs that I wanted to make sure I had on there. So um, they just do a great job. Uh, Girder Music is is where you would get this, uh, this compilation. Uh, I don't sell it. Uh, there's only 500 of them. It, to me, it was more of a collector's item for folks that have been with me for so long through Petra. And, and believe it or not, some do head east. Um, and it's a, a really good package. I'm very proud of it. Uh, I think that um, if you want one, you better get it quick because I think they're, I think they're just about done. Uh, it went fast. And I, I'm very honored with it. And it's just a, one of those blessings that you go, well, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for seeing the value of it. And now it allows uh, a lot of folks that have ne never really heard my solo stuff because most of it was on my label and I am a terrible label. So the poor things never had a chance to really get out there. But now with the Gerda music, they're, they're a much better label and I'm, it's going to al allow folks to finally hear what, what's been happening with my solo stuff for the years. So I'm, I'm, just, I'm glad we we're able to talk about it. Thank you had a question. Sure. John, what I'd like to know, sir, is you mentioned that Girder had a collection of songs that they wanted to pass by you saying, hey, these are great from your solo material. But then you mm -hmm. said you had three songs specifically that you wanted to inject in there. I'm curious, what was your criteria for those three specific songs? What were you what uh, were your thoughts with well, those? Th thank you for asking me not to name the songs. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one song, it, it was a more mellow song, but it was a major song in India. I It was one of those songs that came to me really quickly. I loved it, always have.
but it sort of gets lost in the shuffle a little bit because it's not a major rocker like everybody expects me to do. That was one song. Another song, I think I had my daughter singing on it, so I wanted to make sure that was on it. Um, and um, I, I can't remember what the other reason, but I, I know that, uh, oh, I know, uh, it was one of the uh, Union Sinners and Saints songs sure. that I real I just, for some reason, just loved the feel of it. And it's just, uh, uh, it just was, it needed to be on the on the compilation. But as I understand it, John, like Greg allowed you to select all 40 songs, correct? Oh, yes. Yeah. What was he made it easy for me? I went through all the songs uh, and said, yes, I totally agree with all these, except I want to add these. And because of that, I've got to take three songs off, which was harder. It was harder than adding, you know, uh, mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, they're all my babies and there there's reasons for every one of them. I'm a Christian artist. And uh, to me, the, it's not only the music has to be catchy and entertaining. It has to have a, it has to have a deeper purpose of getting across the message of Jesus Christ. And every song I've done has that purpose. So it's like saying, okay, this message isn't as important as this message. So it's it's uh, it's not easy, but, you know, praise God that I'm allowed to make these choices. Cool. So as you said, this is kind of a, a up to now career spanning collection. Mm -hmm. um, was it more Greg asking you to do this or why why now to do like, a you know, a best of or a career spanning solo it, collection john what what was the it, impetus for that it was their idea okay absolutely again i've been so busy with the petra um tour uh and and petra there's other things going on with petra right now praise god i i am totally blessed about that but so i was concentrating mostly on that and i i as i've done before i've had to put my solo career on the shelf more than once and this was one of those times where i had to do it and just out of the blue they said god hey hey you have a ridiculous collection uh there's a lot of interest in petra right now you need to uh bring across the fact that even out of petra's camp you're doing some amazing stuff and we want to feature it and so i was going okay if you guys can do it that's fine i don't have the time for it but then when they got me going, I got pretty excited about it and was able to contribute as much as I could. But really, they already had it all together. And it was just a, a, a beautiful package. And I just said, thank you guys for for the in-depth uh, uh, study you did. And and uh, I'm very happy with it. And I will admit, I wasn't that much part of it. Uh, but I'm very blessed to have it represent uh, what I've done in the past. Well, and as you said, John, um, it's there's only 500, and they're only at girdermusic.com. So, mm -hmm. friends, I highly recommend pick this up. You will not be disappointed. It's got a collector's trading card in it. Also, the booklet, as you said, John, it has got oodles of cool pictures, um, even from your Head East days, which is really mm -hmm. awesome to see. So I recommend everyone, please, please pick that up if you can. Your latest solo record, uh, Go, mm -hmm. was released yes. in 2020, but it had been quite a while uh, since your previous solo release. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of what was the deal with such a long span and what was the catalyst for you to want to do another solo record then? Um, you mean between uh, Greater Cause and, and, and Go? Go, yeah. Uh, I just felt it was time. Uh, okay. I really did. I'll be honest. I post. I held off a little bit because I actually was busy doing other stuff, also, including my my uh, build up ministry and all that. But I just it was like, no, it's time uh, to put out another rock record, a, another um, John Schlitt rock record, 
And because I had done a Christmas album, uh, and it it was to me it was a beautiful thing. I I I love it. I love the fact that it's out there every you know um, October, November, December. Uh, but I really needed to do another uh, rock record, and I was a little hesitant because to me the greater cause, which was the one just the rock record just before that, was really good, and I was. I won't say fearful, but I had I had concerns that it wasn't going to be as good, you know. Uh, but oh my gosh, once I got once we got started and my three production teams got going, uh, and then when it was all put together, it was absolutely of God. It was a beautiful record, a, a, a uh, exciting, in depth uh, project that was done. Um, with some of the best people in Nashville, which usually that usually means some of the best people in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, once again, God has blessed me with the talent uh, surrounding me that I don't deserve. And it just was a beautiful package. My one regret about that is it came out the day COVID became official and it got shelved so fast that uh, mm -hmm. it's probably, I always call it my oldest new record I've ever had. And, it's still sitting in the garage <laughs> and it's a shame. Uh, but yeah. I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad we have some songs on the history. At least they can be heard and you can see what I'm talking about as far as the, uh, the quality of, of music that it represents. Well, and, and Greg, even at Gerda records, um, I, I didn't purchase it. I'm not much of a vinyl guy, but there is even like a, a special, a uh, vinyl for that, a colored vinyl and whatnot yes. that I thought looked really cool. And, oh, yeah. and again, John, I'm gonna do some advertising for you, but <laughs> that Go record is is really good too. Um, I su I suggest you get the whole record and not just what's on his history thing. It's it's really good and like you said, it kind of slipped under the radar because of COVID and everything. But mm -hmm. that's another great album of yours, John. Well, thank you very much, Rick. I, mm. I really appreciate it. I, uh, again, I can uh, make a lot of positive comments about it because it's not me. It's the team around me. Um, I can only do the best I can with the quality that I'm given. And I've always had amazing, amazing people around me. And, and Go was absolutely one of the best. Mm -hmm. What's the world spinning? Well, and we're going to kind of uh, step back a little bit here, John. And, you know, you've been in the music industry for, gosh, probably 50 years, I would say. Um, but um, in the last 20 years or more, we've seen like a lot of turmoil and drastic changes in the music industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. And um, what what changes would you say that you have seen from, you know, first joining Petra to now in the music industry is there, you know, something, I mean, we went to digital, to streaming, to, you know, whatever, you know, and just how uh, albums are made, you know, now with mm -hmm. everybody in the studio, like, could you just kind of maybe just talk about what you've seen in the whole music industry and in your, in your career? Well, you mentioned digital. That wasn't a bad thing. That was actually purity. That was good. Uh, I was saying you mentioned streaming. That was bad. Uh, yeah. What that did, as far as I'm concerned, it, it totally destroyed uh, the financial um, blessings that artists mm -hmm. would get. Because, uh, uh, for instance, Go, I mean, before it was even mastered, I think people had copies of it. Mm -hmm. um, so for an artist to make a living, um, it pretty much the record sales, which used to be what you would count on. You would put out a, a CD or record and you would sell it and you would get returns for it. And that would help pay your bills every day. Well, that went out the window with, with the internet 
because as far as the internet was concerned, we should be giving them away. I'd like to see a plumber give away his talents, but uh, yeah. uh, for some reason, music was supposed to be free and uh, that destroyed the, the fiber of what was happening at the time. I mean, you still have Taylor Swift's that make billions and billions of dollars, but we're talking, it used to be probably the top 10% would make a decent living. Now I think it's a point, it's the top 0.11 uh, uh, that make a living and they make a great living and everybody else stars. Um, I will say that uh, we, and I'm, I'm only talking financial here in the, in the, in the music, uh, uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but in our case, in Petra's case, we had already established our brand. In other words, people knew who we were all over the world. And that helped uh, because we could still go out and tour and you can make a living that way. And in other words, it totally reversed from um, sell records, make a living, go out on the tour to support the records, where put out a record and and tour and let the record support the tour. Um, and I don't know how new bands do it. I, I, I don't know how they do it because they have to go out and basically pay to play. Uh, so it's very, uh, I feel for them. I feel for these new bands that have the, the drive to want to do it. Now, the younger ones have learned how to use the internet with the streaming and with the, uh, um, you know, the millions of, of hits and this kind of stuff. And they know how to do that. Uh, we all, old guys are still learning and praise God, we have younger people that are, that are helping us with that. Uh, it's just a totally different package there. And uh, uh, I don't like it, but a lot of people do. And uh, uh, I just remember how it used to be. And it was more convenient uh, for musicians um, and a lot of say, well, yeah, but for the public, this is a whole lot more convenient. You're right. But um, uh, if a musician can't afford to make, make his art, then there's less art to be able to, uh, to dive into. So it's, yeah. uh, it, you know, it's a half a dozen or, or six to half a dozen or whatever. So mm -hmm. you just never know. Uh, but that was my view of it. Uh, am I saying it's, it was not cool? Yes, I am. I am saying <laughs> I don't like it. But others will say, yeah, we think it's great. Good, good. I'm glad for it. Well, you know, John, to coincide with what you're saying, a worker always deserves his wage. You, yeah. you never muzzle the ox. Yeah. You let the ox yeah. do his thing. And he always, he's, that's biblical. He's supposed to reap, yeah. you know, for what he's done. I, I always thought that, yeah. <laughs> and again, uh, but on the same hand, all right, uh, I have my own label. Um, like I said, I'm not very good at it, but it did because of the internet, I was able to get my product out to let some folks know that, for instance, I had new records, I had new CDs coming out. And so the internet helped me uh, in a roundabout way because my label would have never had a chance at all in the old scheme of things. I would have had to go through one of the established labels. And uh, so it's it really, it's uh, a different ball game. And uh, I'm almost uh, second guessing myself here, but uh, there are positives in everything. I would have preferred the old way because I guarantee I probably could have gone to a label mm -hmm. and, and had them do it, but I didn't. And, mm -hmm. um, and it's fine. It's fine. Mm -hmm. But you asked me what I see as far as change. That's what I see in the industry.
and and we're going to talk a little bit about Petra here, if that's okay. Um, yeah, I, like you said, Petra just is celebrating their 50th anniversary. They they had concerts last year. They they're doing concerts this year. I I see mm -hmm. you guys are even going to be touring with Bride in South America in October mm -hmm. of this year. I think that is so cool. Um, you're going to be in Brunswick, Ohio, next Saturday, mm -hmm. March 23rd. White Cross is going to be there, and there's another band, Kimber. I see that's going to be there also, and um. Me and my wife Jody, we've got meet and greet tickets. We can't wait to meet meet you guys and and see you and Bob and John and everyone else in person. Um, you've been in music for, like I said, close to five decades, um, and your voice still sounds amazing, John. What is your secret for? You know, <laughs> keeping your voice like that, or is that just something God has blessed you with? My secret is God. Absolutely. Uh, I do everything wrong. I uh, always have. Uh, I, I love caffeine in, in cola form. Um, I love ice. Uh, all the things I'm not supposed to do, but it works for me. And I praise God for it. I don't warm up. Oh, that has cost me a little bit lately. Mm -hmm. uh, I may have to start doing that sooner or later. Mm -hmm. But um, I just praise God that, you know, for some reason, God's allowed me to do what I do. And uh, I wish I had a magic secret that I could uh, bring, but I, I, it's not a magic secret. The secret is I've got a God who has chosen to allow me to do what I do. And I try to my best to make sure that I use this, this uh, instrument to uh, bring across the message that changes lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, my next question, John, I, I know a lot of people know the story, but could you just kind of tell us maybe in a shorter form, if you can, or if you want to elaborate, that's fine. Like your, your journey to faith. We, we know that you were in head East and mm -hmm. we, you know, know that then you had some problems and whatnot. And you came to God because of your wife, but I'm just going to let you tell the story, whatever you want to uh, elaborate on there. If you could just kind of share your journey sure. uh, to Christ. I'm going to try something that I don't know if I have ever done. I'm going to try to do this quickly. Okay. Uh, okay. I was in Head East, which was a, a secular band. Uh, we had success because we did it ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, major success, actually. Had a, a song on uh, on an album called Flaza Pancake, a song called Never Many Reason, which has turned into a classic. Mm -hmm. And that album uh, allowed us to tour all over the U.S. on some of the major tours uh, for like five years. I mean, we were on every major tour there was. Uh, for five years. Uh, it was a, a musician's dream. Uh, actually, it was a musician's dream, but you get too much of that dream, and even that gets boring. And in my in my uh, situation, uh, touring every night in front of 20,000 people actually can get, become boring. So you look for that next excitement. I went to booze first, and then the cocaine and then by the time 19, uh, 1980 came around, I was pretty much hooked on Coke and booze it, to a point where I got fired, went on a binge for uh, the beginning of 1980 till August of 1980, uh, went on a binge with the excuse I was creating a new band. Uh, meanwhile, my wife gets saved. And this is something that was totally foreign to me. Gets saved. What does that mean? She says, I, I found Jesus. I'm going, oh, great a Jesus freak. That's all I need. So I would fight it all the way. Um, August of uh, 1980, I woke up on my couch, realizing that I'd missed my anniversary party. My little one-year-old son's looking at me and a little voice in my head goes, you know what? You're worth more dead than alive. And I totally accepted that. Sat in my chair, looking at my kids. I had a five-year-old daughter and a one-year-old son. And I determined I wasn't going to use a gun because I didn't want it messy. Was sitting in my chair trying to figure out what would be the quickest and most painless combination of pills to finish it off. My wife comes and taps me on the shoulder and says, remember, you, you promised you'd come and talk to my pastor tonight. I says, when? He says, last night when you were drunk. And so I said to myself, okay, I'm going to go because I want to remember that I tried. I went to that pastor's house with an attitude and walked out with the Holy Spirit. 
and my life was never the same. Uh, I had the, the Johnny Band, which was my excuse for saying, being on that binge for six months, um, tried to be in that band after getting saved, and it was the it was the worst thing I could have done. It lasted for about a month, and I finally had to quit music altogether. I figured I'd never sing again. Uh, went and became an engineer, which I graduated the University of Illinois for, and actually ended up in a mining construction company. Uh, that went on for five years, got into the word heavy duty, uh, totally gave up music altogether, never thought I'd sing again. And one day Bob Hartman calls me. And by this time, I'm a big Petra fan. I really am. I It's like, this is what rock should have been. I blew it. That will never be able to use, be used again. And Bob called me and said, will you consider singing for Petra? I said, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I didn't believe it was Bob. I'll tell you, I, I thought it was somebody joking around. But finally, I realized it was. And I said, yeah, let's do it. And he goes, don't you think you should pray about it? And I go, oh, <laughs> yeah. I knew, though. I knew. My wife yeah. knew. Um, I think six months later, I was singing sober for the first time for seven years in front of 6,000 people in Brisbane, Australia. Um, and for the next 20 years, it was totally a, a blessing. I mean, my life has been a blessing ever since. Um, and the fact that God gave me a second chance to go everywhere I was that I'd been with Head East, where I was spouting every four letter word I could think of, because that was cool. Uh, and go back and say, okay, this is me now. This is what I've discovered. You all have the chance to know the same thing I know. And it was just, it was just a beautiful blessing. And I didn't just go back to everywhere I played with Head East. I was overseas. I, we were worldwide. It was so much bigger. And it has been that kind of experience ever since. Even when Petra retired in 2005-06, uh, uh, I was able to go out as a solo artist and and go out with the Union Sinners and Saints and and uh, which was an, is another package that I I go I do every once in a while yeah. and um, it's just always been a blessing to be able to use music and my voice to bring across such a positive uh, life changing message. It's just uh, it's been amazing. Well, and you can tell, you know, um, with Greg and you, you know, the band definitely was blessed by God and and used to win thousands, if not tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people to Christ. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that God had that planned out for you, John. So, and thank you for all that you've done with Petra and, you know, that that's just, I loved all your albums with them. Not that I didn't like Greg's, but I really, I really liked it. It was just different. Thank you. And, um, yeah. yeah. Speaking of Petra, could you tell us a story or a special memory that comes to mind uh, with your time with Petra, John? I know it's oh, kind of off the cuff, uh, but. There's many. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll give you two. Okay. Uh, when we were out with Josh McDowell, which was uh, during, mm -hmm. believe it or not, like four different records. I think it mm -hmm. was This Means War, On Fire, um, um, Petra Praise One, and Beyond Belief. All those albums at the time. We were touring with Josh McDowell, which we just we couldn't get enough. And one show we were in California, and the the auditorium was unusual. It had very very wide aisles, and you know going up the the, the bleachers, very wide. I was going, man, that's just unusually wide. And he, Josh would give the altar call, and we would stand behind him as support. Mm -hmm. And he gave the altar call, and that building. Every aisle was packed full of people coming forward. And I remember Jeff turning around going, oh, my gosh. And we were just wide-eyed going, 
whoa, normally what we did, what we did was uh, we would, the people that came forward, we had another room with volunteers and we'd have them go in there and then we would finish the concert uh, for the folks that were waiting on them and maybe do one or two more songs, uh, whatever it took to, to make everything smooth. And there was no place to go. I mean, even the, the room itself was almost too small. We had to say pastors, uh, uh, elders that are sitting, could you please help us and come in and volunteer and talk with these people? And we had to stop the concert. And I remember that like it was yesterday. It just affected me so much, just how God works. It just was so cool. Uh, and then as far as maybe one more, during our um, farewell tour, um, we were in Argentina. And, uh, you know, soccer is a big deal in yeah. South America. It's all over the world. And the biggest soccer arena in Argentina, we did a special concert with a evangelist who was a major guy for kids uh, all over South America. And he draws gigantic crowds anyway. But he said... We, I want to have Petra because I want it to be the biggest crowd we, uh, South America has ever seen. And which was nice of him to say, he says, no, I know for a fact that if we have Petra, it will be the biggest crowd uh, South America has ever seen. And so we're going, well, okay, do you say so? That's cool. And uh, it was well done. Uh, I mean, the, the system was fantastic. Everything was cool. And I remember uh, driving from the hotel and seeing buses along the road as from like the hotel there. And we're talking miles. We're talking miles of buses on both sides, just running down the road going, are they all these people? And, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't know. I mean, you don't. And I walked out on stage and the football arena, I mean, the biggest soccer arena was packed past capacity. And wow. they had a they had a runway that went out sort of in the middle of the soccer field, which I was allowed to go out because I have ears and I wasn't hooked up to anything. So I go out and start singing and the crowd starts singing louder than I could uh, all our songs. And it was just and I'm thinking and we're retiring too. Oh, <laughs> darn. But it was just it it was just one of those things that a, a musician sees, you know, uh, superstars do, and you go, oh, I wish we could have done I, The fact that God allowed me to feel like a superstar for one night was pretty cool. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, thank you, John. Could, um, I know you mentioned this earlier in our interview. Could you tell us a little bit about your Build It Ministry? Oh, I'm curious oh, about that. Uh, well, Build It Ministry was something that... Uh, how to put it, I have several people that wanted to contribute to, to my life, basically. And they says, John, you need to get a, uh, a nonprofit organization together. And I said, you know what, what a beautiful idea, I can help. And so I put this uh, organization together and these contributors uh, started um, contributing to my ministry, which allowed me a whole new world of being able to help. And it was, it probably will be, uh, it went, when, if he does, God takes my voice and says, okay, you've done enough. Uh, my next project will be total concentration on the build-up ministries. I pray that he doesn't. I pray that he allows me to do both. Uh, but I'm able now to, whenever I'm not on the road, which, <laughs> or let's put it this way, whenever I'm not busy, that happened in the past. I'm afraid right now I'm rather busy. But even with that, uh, I'm able to help folks that get lost in the shuffle. For instance, uh, folks that have been on their standing on their own two feet, but all of a sudden have a medical problem or a, or a, a fire or just get into a financial dundrum uh, that of no making of their own, they get lost in the shuffle because 
they're not the ones people go to here, here's aid, you know, uh, here. no, they expect those people to stand on their own two feet and they can't. So I've been able to sort of through God opening doors through the church or whatever to um, help. And uh, it started originally, I wanted to go out and tour and pay for the tour, uh, you know, go out and provide a show for free to a church, for instance, have them charge tickets and use the ticket money to help a local uh, a local problem. Say a, a widow needs a new bathroom, uh, use that or someone, a church needs a new roof. Uh, but no one could understand what I was trying to do. And they said, no, what do you mean? Uh, and so I finally, it's on the books, but it's not what happens now. And so God keeps opening new doors and I have to redefine what my ministry is about every six months so I can uh, let folks know what's going on. Uh, but um, I praise God that, that the doors do open. I praise God that it it, uh, it expands and that, that um, God allows me to, to be able to to help in many different ways. So that that's what my ministry is doing at this moment, Build It Ministry. And really what it means, Build It Ministry, BLD slash it, but the Lord do it. And um, it's a it's exciting time for us. I, and my wife is very involved with it. She's secretary of the corporation. And, and we are uh, constantly talking to our board going, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And so... It's just a, a beautiful way to live. Beautiful way to live. Awesome. We are the broken. We are the chosen. Given and chosen. We wear the armor of God. We wear the armor of God. Standing together. Together. Our truth is our best. What uh, else are you working on, John, or any future music plans? Or I know, you, like I said, I know you're going to be touring with Petra. Do you have mm -hmm. anything else that you can share with us that you're working on for the future? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I have two things that sort of more, more family oriented. Um, my wife has a new book coming out. Okay. Uh, which is a, a, she's a teacher and she has put out a book that uh, really is geared for VBS, uh, Vacation Bible mm -hmm. Study, uh, for teachers that are looking for a uh, either teachers or or parents that are looking for a study uh, for uh, age groups of uh, 12, 10 to 12, 10, probably 12, maybe 8 to 12. Uh, very, very descriptive, very cool. And it's called the, uh, the Scarlet Thread, the Adventure of the Scarlet Thread which is a, a beautiful, beautiful book. Um, we're just actually, we're out here in Scottsdale uh, finalizing the, the situation. Uh, but also in Scottsdale, uh, I have a documentary, a John Schlitt documentary mm -hmm. that we've been working on for about two, oh, three years. And I was told, uh, to, uh, start advertising it because it's coming out in about a month. Uh, well, so- That's awesome. Well, it's it's exciting uh, for anyone that that is curious about my testimony. Uh, uh, a testimony is a major is a mighty uh, uh, tool, and to be able to do it in a documentary, sort of explain a little bit more in depth of what what God has done in my life. Uh, I'm hoping that it's it's valuable to whoever hears it, whoever uh, gets to. Um, uh, see it uh, and so it's to me it's just another tool that maybe uh can be unique in my situation and it could be used so that's that's a project that i'm actually rather excited about and all this is happening at the same time with the, you know the uh, uh with the history with all that plus in the petra camp there are things going on that i can't talk about right now so so uh, am I busy? Yes. Do I love it? Yes. Praise <laughs> God. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to not be bored in life. Uh, what can I say? Okay, cool. Kent, you had a question? John, before we before we continue on, you mentioned your wife's your, your wife's book or her curriculum, The Scarlet Thread. Is there a specific place? Because I will post every, every link 
mm -hmm. uh, to your websites and things of that nature uh, in our description. Is there a specific place where our viewers can go to check out your wife's book? You know what? At this moment, we are actually finalizing everything. Okay. I wish I uh, keep an area. I'll tell you what. Just go to johnschlitt.com. Sure. And I, I, we will make sure we have that information as soon as we get it. And uh, it's going to be, it's actually going to be sold wherever books are sold, uh, all over, uh, including, uh, you know, uh, where do you sell, buy books? I don't know. <laughs> I'm too busy with music. Wherever books are sold, uh, it will be available. Okay. And so, John, is that where f fans can connect with you online at is your website yes. at johnschlitt.com? Okay. Yes. Uh, please, please go there. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, johnschlitt.com, or you can just Google John Schlitt. Uh, mm -hmm. But th there you have, you know, I've got Schlitt Shop. You've got uh, uh, all the all the, the music that's available. You've got um, uh, some of my my wood projects that I've done in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, it's never it's never caught up. I'm a bad label, <laughs> bad Facebook. You know, I just <laughs> praise God, praise God. I have have, have a, a volunteer team that sort of keeps me in the in the loop of things because if not, I would have disappeared off the internet a long ago. So. <laughs> Well, and I'm, I'm curious again about this documentary. Will, will that be something that will be available uh, on your website or a, a, a special uh, website? Or don't you know yet how that's going to actually come out, John? Or Actually, one of the reasons why it took so long is we, we had to make sure all our T's were crossed and our, do, our, uh, our I's were dotted. Um, I think right at this moment, it's going to be on YouTube, that kind of thing. Okay. But again... Please go to johnschlitt.com because I will make sure that we explain everything that's going on as soon as I figure it out. Um, it's it's a, it's exciting. Uh, both of these things are, you know, I'm a musician. I'm a singer. I write mm -hmm. songs. I I I get in front of ama amazing bands. I'm not real good with the with Facebook and and how things are worked on, on the internet. But I will do my best to make sure that uh, these are absolutely easily available uh when i i know how to do it <laughs> okay okay sometimes i feel like i'm losing control life can knock you down it can rattle your soul but the world fight damn right feels like i can't take it anymore here i come to dinner And we're, we're kind of winding down here. Kent, did you have any questions for John? Sure. John, if you're good on time, I had just a few little questions along your journey. If Absolutely, you know. buddy. Please ask away. Okay. So, you know, I'm a fan that goes way back and um, various and sundry questions along your journey. And I'm curious, John, because I do love this album, Head East. <laughs> that is a pancake. Uh -huh. just, just curious about some of your brief thoughts here. What were your thoughts, John, on recording your very first album with Head East? Uh, it was y'all began in 1974. What were your thoughts mm -hmm. about recording this album at the time? I was very excited. Uh, the fact that we were going to go in, remember, we did that album was paid for by us. Yes. Uh, and uh, Roger, uh, the uh, uh, keyboard player, found a friend that donated a certain amount of money. I, my uh, I think my uncle and my a good friend of mine uh, invested uh, the rest of the money and we went in and did it our own. And mm -hmm. the truth is that album was only supposed to be a demo album. We decided back then it was you would do a demo uh, tape and send it on. <laughs> I hate that picture. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, you you do a demo uh, tape and send it to all the record companies and hope that they would jump aboard. And we said, you know what? Forget the demo uh, tape. We're going to do a demo album. And as the, we send them out to, to all these different labels, we'll sell the rest of them to try to recoup what it cost us to do it. And so if never if, if nothing ever comes of it, at least we, we can try to get our money back and pay the loans off. And um, so it, it was just an adventure. We were kids doing something that that musicians dream about and uh 
it was a 16 track studio. We did everything on our own. Uh, it was, you know, just a basic thing that the, the uh, studio was, studio was in the middle of cornfield. It was just typical Midwest kids doing the best they knew how. And when we sent it out to a couple of folks, one became uh, one group came, became our managers. They got it in the hands of Casey, mm -hmm. uh, which was the second biggest breakout FM station in the country. They sent it off to KY102 in Kansas City, which was also a major breakout. And all of a sudden, we're the most requested album single in the Midwest. And we've only got 2,000 copies of the record. And I'm getting all these. And I was the... Uh, uh, I guess the secretary of the record company at the time. And we're getting these orders from all these uh, uh, distribution, uh, you know, record stores going, oh, we need 2000 copies of this. We need five guys. I'm going, <laughs> we don't have them. So <laughs> it was, it was a very exciting time. I remember the, the, our future managers came in and had actually booked us with Ted Nugent in the, uh, in Southern Illinois at a, at a uh, um, I guess, a, oh my gosh, a high school, high school gymnasium. And it was just a thrill to play with Ted. That was cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was an excuse for them to come and say, you guys have a hit record. You've got three labels right now that want to sign you. You make a choice. We want to manage you. And we're going, oh, okay. So that was the beginning of, of a really exciting time. That was a dream come true for a bunch of kids that, that uh, want to do. And like I said, it was a dream for a while until after a while, you can only do, you play in front of, you know, thousands of people every night and it gets boring. I had a family. I never saw them. We were on the road all the time. Uh, but that record was an adventure. It was, uh, it was, it was one of those things that, of course, will be in my memory. It's a positive thing. It was a positive thing, uh, an adventure that kids got, and and it became a success. Well, and you know, it's of course flat as a pancake. It went gold, and I just, you know, I want to say I knew that it was uh, self-produced and released by you guys. It's so crisp yeah. and punchy. I mean, it's it's a wonderful little album sonically, and you know. John, something of interest that I noticed about this and <clears throat> the drummer was, is it Houston, Steve Houston? Is that how Steve he Steve Houston. Yes. Okay, Steve so Houston. three songs on this album, just interestingly mm -hmm. enough, mm -hmm. and I'm not trying to, to wedge something in where it doesn't belong, but I couldn't help but notice that three songs of interest, like for instance, you had written One Against the Other on Flat yes. as a Pancake, uh -huh. And then drummer Steve Houston, he had written City of Gold yes. and Brother Jacob. And yes. myself as a Christ follower and hearing this, because when this was released in 75, that would have made me four years old. So <laughs> I was a Petra fan. Oh, first, thank you. Thank you, buddy. Coming back I to Head you. East. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help but notice, John, all three of those songs actually had biblical meaning and illusion and reference. So what might be your thoughts on those three songs in retrospect? I would love to say that we were, we were talking about, about Jesus. No, uh, I tell you what, Steve came from Southern Illinois and that was very, very by, I mean, major Bible belt. Uh, and he was raised, uh, you know, in the church. Uh, so he just wrote naturally what he felt. Um, I wrote uh, one against the other, because even back then I was seeing how everyone keeps fighting each other. It, I just, it was not cool. I wish I could say that it was Jesus. I was that, that I was uh, uh, being affected by, but at the time I will tell you that I prayed to God at, from the time I was 12 years old. I prayed to God every night to God. Did I know Jesus? No. Um, did I care about Jesus? No. Did I read the Bible? No. But I did pray to God. And I'll tell you what, you've got to understand there's a difference between praying to Jesus, you know, praying to Jesus, understand what Jesus did in our lives and praying to God. God could be anybody, you know? So 
um, when I became part of, uh, it started doing the live touring uh, with with Head East, I was fair game, and that was that was the enemy's world, and that I now I'd love to say well the enemy didn't you know the Satan made me do it, but I was fair game, and that's why I was I really fell into that that depth of uh, stupidity, uh, bondage, uh, because I didn't have Jesus, and so. Uh, I would love to say, yes, those three songs were all about God. They were about God, but was about Jesus? Not necessarily. Sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, John, I'd like to ask now, please correct me where I'm wrong, but I'd like okay. to get your first impressionistic thoughts here. I think <laughs> your first concert with Petra on Back to the Street, great album. Mm -hmm. Was that in Norway? No, no. I, I'll tell you what. The first, the first show I did with Petra was on February 3rd, my birthday, uh, 1986. And that was in Brisbane, Australia. And that was before Back to the Street came out. Uh, we, were, we were catching up with all the, uh, the uh, uh, shows that were already booked when Greg left. Mm -hmm. And so it took about six months before I was able to we were able to go back into the studio to do Back the Street. I, I will say the first show we did on the Back the Street tour was in, uh, oh boy, uh, in like in Wyoming or something like that. It just with the with the the Garmon Key and mm -hmm. it was a great tour. But I remember that first show and a couple of things happened that were very disheartening. I. Uh, uh, I got a lesson about uh, about Chris, the Christian industry and the uh, the the value of contracts real quick uh, with them. And, and it just so I I remember that that show very, uh, very uh, well because of uh, actually the disappointment in the in the failure of keeping your word as a Christian. I got you. Well, I didn't mean to dredge up any any. Bad no. Oh, I was no. just wondering, John. What might have been your just yourself as a as, as a front man and a great singer mm -hmm. and you know representing Christ through through a great music that he gave us as a gift? What uh, were your thoughts going from head east to performing your very first concert with Petra oh, with regard to representing your Lord and Savior? Yes, it was super exciting to me. Just the fact that God was giving me a second chance to go. And I knew the Petra was big enough that we were going to be in everywhere that Head East had been before. But right off the top, he said, oh, no, not just there. We're going worldwide. So the first show I ever did was in Australia, a place where I'd always like to go, but never was. And I will tell you that uh, uh, I was I was raw and I blew my throat out after three songs. I was so excited, blew my throat out. Um, and if I'd have been Petra at the time, we had six shows uh, that tour in Australia, and I blew my throat out after the first show of three songs. And if I would have pet been Petra, I would have fired me on the way back from Australia. But they were godly dudes and said, you know, John, you sound fantastic in the in our rehearsals. What's going on? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, the truth, uh, I look back at it now, I couldn't hear myself quite right. Mm -hmm. The We we hadn't honed in yet with the, with the uh, sound men. Uh, it just had been so long since I'd been doing it. Five years, my gosh. Uh, so so it just took a while for me to get my get my wings back on. And finally, when I did, praise God, I was able to to earn the value of being in front of a, a major, major Christian rock band like Petra. I sure, think yes. that's so cool, John, that your first concert with Petra was on your birthday. That is so cool. Yeah, I sort of thought so, too. I It was like, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. What a great birthday present. That's right.
John, moving right along with a few more things, the Union of Sinners and Saints, more to come from this great group. You know what? I would like to say yes. Billy and I are so busy doing so many other things. The fact that that record, the second one, came out was actually a surprise to both of us because we, uh, you know, that was, all, I think, during COVID. And we had started writing just because we had nothing else to do. And um, we had done our first record, which was really, I think, really good. And the second record was really us being, everyone said, hey, you've got some time. Yeah, let's go. Let's write. Let's do something. Let's uh, go in. And um, we started writing songs. And it stretched over a period of at least a year, maybe a little longer. And so when we finally, we finally realized, hey, we've got 10 great songs here. Uh, mm -hmm. I said, we do? Because I don't, I didn't remember the first, you know, first three or four we did because it had been so long. And we put them all together. And I said, oh, my, this is great. This is good stuff. And Billy, of course, being the go-getter he is, let's, let's put it on record. Let's do it. I went, Billy, uh, do you have time? Do you? Oh, well, let, yeah, we should do it. We should do it. <laughs> so. Uh, we put it on a, a record and again, it's on our own label and yeah, what can you say, but it's out there for folks that want to hear that kind of style, especially the blend of Whiteheart and Petra together. Mm -hmm. And it's really, in fact, I, I loved it so much, especially the, the uh, last record that I've got several songs on this compilation of history which is you know uh, on that record so it's not necessarily just my solo project it's projects that i've been part of not petra which was uh union city states and i actually have one song from uh from uh two guys from petra which was a a, a praise and worship album yes sir john my last question to you that you mentioned again we were kind of reverting a little bit back to history my last question is this um one of my favorite petra albums wake up call uh, you belted out the song Believer Indeed, and it's a song about one's legacy. John, how would you wish to be remembered, or what do you hope to be remembered for? Oh, boy. That I was as real as possible. That what I sang about in Petra, I did my best to be that way in real life. Um I pray to God that he is blessed with, with everything I do, knowing that I'm a human and I blow it every day, knowing that the blood of Christ allows me to have a second chance, usually every day, that I'm able to, to come across as somebody who was real, a real Christian. If that happens, if, if that comes across as my legacy, I couldn't do any better. Awesome. And, and John, I just have one last question, and we're going to have a message from home here. But um, it's kind of along the same lines, a little bit as Kent's question. But what would you like to say to all your friends and fans, or what words of wisdom would you like to share with us today? I, that's always a two-part answer for me. For we Christians, be excited, be encouraged. The body of Christ is not dying away. It's growing leaps and bounds. In our country, uh, they're doing their best to try to, to convince us that uh, Christ doesn't exist or he, uh, it, it's a shame. But Jesus Christ is Lord. He has a plan for each one of us. And the body of Christ is growing as I said before, leaps and bounds. We are part of a, a growing family. God has plans. We should be excited and we should be the warriors that we're supposed to be. Now to folks who have never been part of the family of God, why not? You've got the God of the universe that wants to walk with you, he has a perfect plan, had a perfect plan for your life before the beginning of time. Why are you trying to do it all on your own when you have an universal God that wants to take a hold of you and guide you through the perfect plan he has for you. Thank you, John. And uh, we always close all of our um, interviews with something we call message from home. It's just a, a word of scripture 
And huh? uh, we just want to keep the main thing, the main thing. And John was thinking that? about you. Um, a scripture that came to my mind was Psalms 100 verses one and two. And it says, shout for joy to the Lord and all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. And John, I think of you, you've been doing this for the Lord for almost 40 years now, and you have a wonderful voice, and you've used your talents for the Lord, and we just want to thank you for that, John, and I want to thank you for giving us your time today, and um, we just love Petra and your solo material and everything you've done, and so thank you. Thank you so much, John. Oh, guys, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your interest. Thank you for allowing me to share what's on my heart, what's, what we're thinking with Petra, and and what what's going on in our lives at this time. Thank you, guys. Thanks mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to also say really quick, John, thank you to uh, from your publicity team. Miss Benita, I want to say thank you as well for helping us out today. So thank you, John. Thank you, Miss Benita. So Friends, thank you for watching, and we're going to say goodbye. If you could just stick Guys, around it, for, for one minute, John, after we close, that would be great. Okay. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye, y'all. Thank you, Rick. Then, <laughs> Can I get, will you record that and, and uh, put that on an ad? That was I very paid. good. I, I can if you <laughs> would want me to, John. Yeah. Please do. <laughs> Anything for you. Speaking of thank Petra. You. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> I just you... said thank you very much. Okay, yes. sure, what a nice sure. thing to say. Thank you. Yeah. See, there'll be an edit there, John. Okay. So okay. they'll never know. Okay. Well, well, there, but... <laughs> uh, <laughs> so here he comes. Here we go. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. You're um, all good. Okay. I didn't. Let's. I want to answer that question. That's very cool. Please ask that question again. Sure. Well, that's yes, sir. That's why we don't record do this live. So uh, isn't that great? Praise God. <laughs> Let me get my bearing straight, John. I gotta I gotta okay. find out where I was at again. Uh, oh yes, the the three point. Let me just start with this yeah. segment. I'll just okay. okay. Yep. You ready? Yes. <laughs> Here we go.